As every Sunday, Pat Sullivan from Sullivan Hardware and Garden gives us great advice for all those do it yourself home improvement projects. And we are heading towards a time of the year when you might be hosting a lot of people at your house. Pat's talking about getting our homes ready by painting indoors. Well, as it gets a little bit cooler and we start to move inside, we're starting to think about the holidays and maybe thinking about how can I change the look of my home for the company that's coming around the holidays and really just for yourself to enjoy the season inside. Uh, and you know what? One of the least expensive is painting. Just putting on a new coat of paint in your home, in the family room, living room, kitchen. And, but a lot of people, uh, I think it's a little bit easier than outside because outside is such a commitment inside, but there's still ways. And what I like to do, you know, you look at the big color boards, I go right for the color cards because they show these beautiful companion sets. So you know that you are actually selecting colors that go together rather than just picking up the board going, ah, I think that looks good with that. So that's the first little tip. Look at those first and then you can kind of, that's a good base. And then if you want to move one way or the other. So every paint color has a companion. As far as the paint goes, get something good quality, the best quality paint that you can afford. And on walls, you kind of look at your walls and you say, well, you know, I live in a uh, 1920s house and the walls are crooked and they're chipped. Make sure you use a flat paint, dead flat, because flat tends to hide all those imperfections. But if your walls are in great shape, you might want to use a uh, matte finish or an eggshell because that gives the richness to the color that you don't get with flat. So those are your choices. And really, like I say, it depends on the, the, uh, how, how the quality of your walls, the condition of the walls. As far as the trim goes, either a satin or a semi-gloss to kind of set the trim off. And again, the same thing. If the trim is all kind of boogered up and, uh, and scraped, I would use the lower sheen. I would use either an eggshell or a satin. I would stay away from the semi-gloss or the gloss. So some of the mistakes that people make, a lot of it, it's easy. You know, you, you spend great money on, on the paint and then you buy a cheap roller. Get the very best roller. This is a microfiber roller. And because a, uh, a cheap roller can make really good paint look kind of average. So get the very best. Same thing with a brush. Not only a, a good, uh, you know, a, uh, a size of brush good enough to do the job, but a good quality. So this is a good quality brush. A lot of times people pick this. And first of all, it's like you're being paid, as my father always said, I'm paying you to put paint on the wall. So people tend to over, you know, take too much. You want to get paint on your brush. So get a good size brush, get good quality brush. You're going to paint or you're going to uh, tape off the, uh, the trim. Don't get regular masking tape because it bleeds. So when you pull that off, you get that jagged line. This is called frog tape or the blue tape's really good too. This frog tape is really good because they've taken whatever is in diapers and they've put it on this so it absorbs it and you get nice straight lines. So look for frog tape or something similar. And remember, this is just a little side note here. If it's a really old house, don't start sanding. If it, you have lead paint underneath there, you want to make sure it's encased. So don't get into an aggressive sanding thing in an older home without testing to make sure. And if you do, go online. There's all kinds of uh, ideas of how to remove and how to encase lead paint. So a great time to get inside and get ready for the holidays.